One of the most popular questions I get asked is if somebody is natty or not. And so I'm going to give you the tools to decide for yourself. Wouldn't it be great if you could look at someone and you yourself would know if somebody's natural, if they're enhanced? Coach Greg, in today's video, I'm going to be going over the signs to look for and what not to look for when determining if somebody is natty or not. One of the most popular questions I get asked is if somebody is natty or not. And so I'm going to give you the tools to decide for yourself. Wouldn't it be great if you could look at someone and you yourself would know if somebody's natural, if they're enhanced? Well, in today's video, we're going to be going over this so that you yourself can determine if somebody's natty or not. Number one. They post or say that they're natural. This is not a sign. You're thinking, yeah, the guy brags about being natural. The guy posts about it all the time. It's not a sign. Some people who are natural want to say that they're natural because they're proud of it. They want you to know that this physique that is in fact above average was achieved while being 100% natural. Because after all, if it was aided by PDs, then it's not really as impressive now, is it? And so they want you to know, they want perhaps the glory of saying, hey, I did this and it's all me. There's nothing wrong with that. In my younger years, when I was in fact natural, I'd say, hey, I am natural. And the reason was that is because I didn't want to be compared to other people who were enhanced. Yes, my physique was above average, but it wasn't as good as some of the guys who were using and or abusing performance enhancing drugs. And so saying that you're natural, bragging about even, has no bearing on whether or not somebody is natty or not. Number two, not looking good, having a dad bod, being very underwhelming. Just because you don't look good, even if you're below average, doesn't mean that you're natural. For the most part, people say, oh, I looked at his physique and that can be achieved natural. And so I think the guy's natural. Well, how you look while being natural, it has more to do with your genetics than anything else. And so if you have really good genetics and you don't even go to the gym, you could in fact have an amazing physique. And on the other hand, if you train harder than last time and you've been going to the gym for years, perhaps five years straight without even a day off, you watch all the Mike Isretel videos you want, you've got my freaking cookbook, you've got everything. You hired Coach Greg as your coach. If you have shit genetics and you're on performance enhancing drugs, you will most likely still going to look 100% natural. You don't want to look natural. You're on test, trend, you're blasting everything, but you still look underwhelming. And the reason for that is in fact your genetics. And so just because somebody has a shitty or or average looking physique, it doesn't mean that they're natural. Number three, being shredded, diced, having low body fat, losing fat very, very quickly. That doesn't mean the guy's enhanced. That can very well be done while being 100% natural. You don't need PDs, you don't need SARMs, Anivar, you don't need special fat burners, clenbuterol, and so on, to lose body fat at an extremely fast rate. And listen to this, it's 10 times easier to burn body fat than it is to build muscle. And so if you go on a diet and you want to make a visual transformation, you're going to notice that 10 times more quickly than if you try to go on a bulk, you're trying to put on muscle very quickly. It's very difficult to put on muscle, but very easy to lose fat. And you're thinking, no, it's not. Losing fat is so easy. The stubborn belly fat, I've been trying for years. The reason you're not losing weight is because you're not in a deficit. And so if you were in a deficit, either through doing more cardio, burning off more calories, or through eating fewer of those calories, you're going to lose a lot of fat. Walking around shredded with a six pack, some people, they just have amazing genetics. They find it naturally easy to walk around with single digit body fat. For other people, it's next to impossible. This has more to do with your genetics and far less to do with taking performance enhancing drugs. And just so you know, if you in fact get on testosterone, tran, anivar, you name the drug, it's not going to help you to burn all that much fat. You're thinking if I took steroids, I would be shredded. No, you wouldn't. Taking steroids helps you to build a lot of muscle, but it only to a smaller degree helps you to burn a lot of fat because to burn fat, you need to be in a deficit and whether you're taking steroids, SARMs and so on or not, you still have to reduce the calories in your diet and or burn more of those calories off. And so looking at someone and saying, wow, look at the abs, no bearing on if the guy's natty or not. Number four, very fast gains in size and or strength despite years of training. This is an obvious sign that somebody is using and or abusing performance enhancing drugs. If you've been training in the gym for years, let's call it five years, and suddenly you put on a lot of muscle, you get a lot stronger. For example, you put on 10 pounds of muscle in a month, your bench press went up 50 pounds, most likely you started to use something. You're thinking, no, but I just started eating more protein. I started training twice a day. 
It doesn't work like that. You're not suddenly putting on 10 pounds of muscle in a month and gonna claim that you're in fact natural. And so if you follow someone's career and you look at their before photos, their after photos, and you notice that there's a certain spot in their timeline where they suddenly grew a lot of muscle and they suddenly got a lot stronger. That is the time when they started to use performance enhancing drugs. And number five, a sudden drop in muscular size, muscle mass, and or strength. If you've seen a guy you know, bench pressing 400 pounds, perhaps for 10 reps. They're 200 pounds of muscle. They look incredible. And suddenly a couple months go by and they've lost 10 or 15 pounds of muscle. Their bench press has dropped 50 or 100 pounds. And they're saying, yeah, you know, I just didn't go to the gym as much. I, I took a couple of weeks off. I haven't been training as hard. I've been slacking off. You know, I went on vacation. I got sick. You're not easily going to lose all that muscle. Remember that time period when we were marrying Halloween masks all the time? How many of you trained to the gym as much as you used to? I sure didn't. I perhaps went to the gym two, maybe three times a week. Did I lose any muscle? Maybe two pounds. In many months, I dropped a couple pounds of muscle. And so do you really think it's normal to lose 10, 15, 20 pounds of muscle in a matter of months? Not unless you were on performance enhancing drugs. If you were on cycle and you suddenly go off, expect you to get a lot weaker and to lose a lot of muscle. And so if you have a favorite social media influencer and they look jacked all the time and suddenly they don't, or perhaps they're not posting the same photos, they're posting all throwbacks, you know there's a reason for that is because they're not natural. And number six, it kind of goes with the last one, but basically their physiques goes into ups and downs of impressive and not impressive. If you see that somebody for parts of the year is looking really good and then other parts are looking bad and then they're looking good and then they're looking bad, it most likely means they're cycling on and off. This is very normal and it's common. Unless somebody is blasting all the time, their physique's not going to always look all that impressive. We've seen wrestlers, for example, Triple H, sometimes he comes out and he looks amazing other times he looks a lot smaller. We've even seen The Rock in his 30s. Remember when he came out and he hardly had any muscle in comparison to what he looks like right now? And so the physiques, they come and they go depending on the phase of their cycles. Many are just going to disguise it. For example, Mike Thurston, he's going to say something like, well, I just trained really hard for those three months and I put on that 20 pounds of muscle. I, I looked incredible. It's not that they just trained harder or that they slacked off. Oh, you know, I was relaxing. I was vacationing more. I was partying a bit more. And so I lost all of my muscles. It doesn't work like that. I could literally stop going to the gym right now for three months, just bike raced all the time and show you before and after photo. And I might lose five or six pounds of muscle. Five or six pounds. That would be from not training at all and bike racing. Parting more doesn't destroy your physique. Now, yeah, it's not good for you, but it's not going to make so much difference that you can visually see the difference. I'm not talking about getting a little bit softer and getting in some love handles. People can go from 10 to 20% body fat on a bulk versus a cut. But if they're about the same weight, 220 pounds, for example, and for parts of the year, they have a six pack and the other parts they don't, very obvious sign that they are cycling on and off performance enhancing drugs. They're continuing to make improvements in size and or strength after the age of 35. Thinking, no, no, that's not true. Everyone can keep going. I mean, after all, look at Michael Hearn. He's in his 50s. He looks better than ever. It doesn't happen when you're natural. Unless, of course, you started training in your 30s, then yeah, you're going to keep improving perhaps until you're 40. Most people have 10 plus years of good training in their belt before they get to a sticking point. But look at a guy like Jeff Nippert. Has he in fact put on one pound of muscle in the last five years? I don't think so. And as far as I know, Jeff is still under 35. And so why do you think that is? Once you've had 10 plus years of training, it's very difficult to make any improvements in size and or strength. With more years of training, you come closer to your genetic limit and it becomes much harder to put on muscle. Not only that, after 35 or so, you're going to start slowly losing testosterone. Your testosterone levels are not going to be as high as they were before. And so it's extremely difficult to make any improvements whatsoever. And so if you have a favorite social media influencer and they're continuing to make gains in their late 30s, 40s, and so on, how is that possible? What are they actually doing? Number eight, they compete in bikini, physique, bodybuilding, men's physique, any of that. They essentially, they compete in competitions that are not drug tested. Think of it. There are drug tested organizations that they can compete in that they're going to be tested in. 
And so if they're competing and choosing to do so in a sport or competition that not being tested, and whether that's bodybuilding or powerlifting or whatever, there's probably a reason for that. And so for example, if they're a guest lifter in a drug tested powerlifting meet, why are they the guest lifter and not actually lifting? If you're a natural athlete, don't you want to go into drug tested sport that you can compete against other like-minded athletes and prove and shut those haters up? You enter a drug tested competition, you're under all the testing that they offer because you know you're going to pass. After all, you are in fact natural, and so what do you have to worry about? And so yes, it is in fact possible that you want to compete in non-tested competitions, but wouldn't you do both? And so if you are in fact a natural athlete, I strongly encourage you to enter drug-tested sporting competitions. That's what they're for. They're for you. And so by you neglecting to enter those competitions, you're taking away the prestige of that competition. When I was competing as a natural athlete, I was competing in both drug-tested and non-drug-tested sporting competitions. I did both. It makes sense. Of course, you can test yourself against the best athletes if you don't choose to, but you should at least be supporting drug-free organizations because you are in fact drug-free yourself. Despite the fact that they look incredible or extremely strong, they avoid competing altogether. For example, if they can bench press 400 pounds and deadlift 800 pounds, or if they look like Chris Bumstead, why are they not competing? Really think about that. If they were to compete, is because they would then perhaps get drug tested? Are they avoiding the drug test? You might be thinking, oh, they just don't want it. They just won't want to prove themselves. Why wouldn't they? If you're a gifted athlete, you're really good at something. Let's, for example, say you're six foot 10 inches tall. You can jump three feet off the ground. You can do 360 dunks. You're an amazing athlete. You're not playing basketball. Why is that? Why are you avoiding something that you're extremely good at? Do we not want to take part in the things that we're really good at? Either you're scared of getting drug tested. You don't want to have to lie to people, which is a perfectly valid reason. And I respect that. Or perhaps you're scared that you're not going to win the competition, that you somehow can't handle the loss, the rejection, the feeling of inadequacy. And to me, that's another problem. That's another red flag. That's for a different video. And so if you're amazing at something and you're avoid doing that, then to me, that is a red flag. You're probably not natural. Number 10, it's gonna be more obvious. Your girl in your downstairs is bigger than your upstairs. Let's leave that to the imagination. Now, when you take performance enhancing drugs, there's something that's going to grow. When you're a baby, before you've been exposed to testosterone, a man and woman, essentially their private parts, they look the same. And with the addition of testosterone, it signals the private parts to grow a certain way. And for men, well, you know what you get. And if that thing, by the way, is not getting as hard as you would like sometimes, consider harder than last time. You know what this is for. Code Greg, 15% off. But when you take performance enhancing drugs, steroids and so on, that that can begin to grow. And so because of that, if you're a man or a woman and you see this, you notice that, probably not natural. And trust me, you will see it. If it's there and it's way bigger than it should be, you know that person is not natural. And for the guys, those basketballs are gonna be slightly deflated. They're not gonna be as big and round as they once were. And so if you notice that they're very, very small in comparison to what we'd normally expect, well, they've probably been suppressed or HTPA axis. It's not going to produce in testosterone. And so it's going to be smaller than last time, perhaps one half to one third the original size. Number 11, the ever-changing female voice. Now, ladies, I need to warn you, if this is important for you, you need to avoid taking steroids and or performance enhancing drugs. And once you see it start to change, and by see it, I mean you feel it. There's a slight change in your vocal cords. You need to stop taking it immediately. This is a warning sign. If you continue to use it, it's going to be permanent. And so if you hear a woman that just doesn't sound right, she ain't natural and she knows it. Number 12, new hair growth. Why are we growing a bunch of hair in our 20s and 30s? And so, yeah, women that suddenly need to start shaving, why are you growing all that extra hair? Why are you shaving your mustache? Why are you growing hair in parts you never needed to? Why is it so much thicker? And for men, why do you now have back hair? When I started using testosterone, my back started to grow hair. What is going on right now? I never needed to shave my back. Suddenly my back is starting to get hairy. And if you saw my back now, it's incredibly hairy compared to what it used to be. 
And so if you take steroids, you might grow extra hair or it could thin it out. Many men are going to notice thinner hair. They perhaps are using trend. The hair's falling out. Women, for example, they're showering and all of a sudden the hair is coming out more than ever before. And remember, even on low doses, it can happen. And whether it's steroids and or SARMs, this can happen. And so if you notice that you're losing a lot of hair or growing extra hair, very obvious sign of performance enhancing drug use. Now, remember, losing hair can also be a function of extreme dieting. If you're not eating enough calories, that can also be a sign. But in general, remember, a lot of these signs go together. If you're getting a change in vocal cords, if your hair is growing a bit more, your hair is falling out, the downstairs is bigger, and the next one on the list, you're getting a lot of acne, clear, obvious signs of using performance enhancing drugs. And so yes, changes in hormones, whether you're going on cycle or off cycle, that can cause acne. And so if you suddenly see somebody getting a lot of acne that they didn't have before, this can be an obvious sign of using performance enhancing drugs. And number 14, gynecomastia. This is when breast tissue forms in the male under the nipple. If you pinch under the nipple below, you will feel a hard tissue beginning to form. Some people think it's just body fat. Look, if it's starting to become gyno, you're going to feel under the nipple. It's going to get hard. It's going to be a hard glandular tissue. And the only way to get rid of this once it's formed permanently is to in fact get surgery. You can't just take Nolvidex or take Femora. Once you first get the signs of gynecomastia, you need to do something about it. That's why people say have Nolva on hand, get ready, use your Imrimidex or Femora and so on. Once you see it's starting to change, you need to get on it right away. Don't wait till the end of the cycle. By then, it could be too late. Number 15, to me, this is an obvious sign. You have that moon face despite having a shredded physique. And so people using and abusing performance and anti drugs, despite the fact that they may in fact have single digit body fat, their faces look like they're bloated. looks like they're puffy. Perhaps it looks like they're eating way too many calories. The reason for that is when you're on testosterone and various steroids, you're going to hold more water. It's water intensive. You're going to get a puffy face. It's called a moon face. It's a real thing. And so if you see your favorite bodybuilder and they're flexing, you're like, wow, look at the six pack. But that's funny how round of a face they have. That is an obvious sign of using performance enhancing drugs. Number 16, they just look too freaking vascular. When you're on performance enhancing drugs, it makes your red blood cells go up. And so you have more red blood cells and your vascularity is going to be increased. You have more veins in the arms and so on. And so despite the fact that you're very lean, most people don't have extreme vascularity. The pumps look incredible. And so when you're in the gym and you're shredded and you have veins everywhere popping out, that to me, a sign of using performance enhancing drugs. But remember, just because you don't have those veins doesn't mean that you're natural. Oftentimes people have higher levels of body fat or they just don't have the genetics for vascularity. And so just because somebody doesn't have the veins doesn't mean that they're natural. And of course, if you're trying to stay natural, we have supplements at the HLT website that will help you to stay natural, help you to put on muscle. For example, G test for increased levels of testosterone. Also, Acti Builder and Turk Builder, some of my favorite products, as well as Geo2 Max for improved cardio. If you get any of these or all of them at the same time can help dramatically improve your ability to build muscle. And by that, I mean, it makes an actual difference. Many of you believe that creatine is the best supplement in the world, that this is the one you should take. I'm not gonna disagree that it's an amazing supplement and it's actually 50% off right now. But these other supplements, I do believe can make just as much, if not way more of a difference. And so my advice, do whatever you can. If you have no money, head over to the website and you can get a free diet and training program. Remember, it's not just about making money. Of course I want to, but I'm also giving you away free stuff. It's close to 50 pages, free diet and training program. Head over to my website, become one of the 300,000 plus newsletter subscribers. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment to boost the algorithm. Like this video if you liked it. If you didn't like it, why are you still watching it? Watch one of those two loops. And of course, cookbooks, training books, circle, diet book. You can get all these on the website, PDF hard copy, get what you can, get what you need. And until next time, I am out.